Hey, what's up? This is the Augur of Dunlane here. I know I said I wouldn't do any more videos about dodgy techwear retailers and clothing, but you guys just seem to enjoy watching them so much, how can I deny you that at the low, low cost of my sanity? This week we'll answer the question, what are the best techwear shoes? Are they a recent hyped up collab? Are they an ultra-functional pair of boots? Are they some cyberpunk, futuristic, crazy, 3D printed sneakers? It's a question with no easy answer. Or so I thought, because on one of my many travels around the interwebs, I came across the very legitimate looking techwear.store. And if you guys have watched a few of these videos before, you'll know that any retailer with techwear in the title, talking about selling techwear clothing and all this stuff, is generally one to be pretty cautious of. Further, this website, of course, sells exactly the same products as the 101 other techwear dropshippers out there with a nice hefty markup from the original Taobao and AliExpress versions. They even carry, of course, the 11 by BB's dark brand whose entire identity is ripped from 11 by BBS. They even have a pair of 11 by BBS shoes on the homepage, a picture of them at least, when uh, they don't sell them at all, or indeed any legitimate brand. What we do have though are some real treats in the sneaker section. We've got some knockoff camo supreme, we've got some suspicious looking off-white, and we have some definitely not Air Force Ones where the product pictures and the on-feet pictures are not of the same shoe. But in amongst these tragic, sorry excuses for footwear, we have the holy grail. I present to you the best techwear shoes. With the lofty promises of achieve an urban and refined look with these best techwear shoes, and perfect to complete your techwear outfits, and premium material mesh fabric right here, it's hard to deny that these present a compelling argument. And yes, these were uh, $10 more expensive than the affordable techwear shoes on the same website, but you know, I believe when you want the best, you just gotta pay that little bit extra. Not to mention the laces on these confirm that they are nice, nice, nice. So I ordered myself a pair in EU46 black, of course, and approximately three weeks later and $60 later, they finally showed up. So we have the best techwear shoes right here. Let's take a look. The first thing to note about these is the top tier packaging, and by that I mean there basically was none. These came uh, encased in bubble wrap and then just put into a postage bag. There was no box or anything like that, so there's an immediate difference between the best techwear shoes and any other established footwear brand, pretty much. Getting them open, they do for the most part look like the product pictures, although the overall low quality of these is also fairly evident. So we'll talk about the looks of these first, and then we'll move on to, frankly, some of the more concerning issues with these. Aesthetically, these are clearly a pretty basic design, which is not necessarily a bad thing, and at a glance, they do certainly have that kind of vaguely techwear look about them. They've got this form-fitting upper, they've got a more futuristic kind of angular looking midsole as well. Um, but looking at these up close, uh, those kind of aesthetic uh, benefits, I suppose, quickly come unstuck. Uh, with many shoes, I tend to like them more when I get them in hand, but with these, not so much. My initial thought was that these are merely a very inspired design of the sock shoe trend that was popular around four years ago with products like the Balenciaga Sock Runner. However, researching a little bit further, the upper is in fact a direct copy of the Adidas Crazy One Advance sock. You can note quite a few clear similarities here. You've got the ribbing over the toe box, you've got uh, a three stripe detail going up each side of the shoe. I can't believe I didn't notice that until I had these in hand. You've got a similar pull tab at the tongue and a near identical little section on the heel at the back here. So yeah, they've essentially taken that upper, they've added these uh, lace details at the top here, which I don't think look particularly good, and they've swapped out the midsole as well. Let's look at the lacing first, does not look particularly good in my opinion. First of all, it says MLO all over it instead of nice like it was supposed to, uh, which is classic dropshipper behavior of you not quite getting the product that you think you're ordering. But the layout of the eyelets means that these don't really have any kind of function. Generally with these kind of sock shoes, when you also have laces, you'll have some kind of cage or some other feature that attaches these laces to the midsole so that you can have that tightness kind of pulling over the shoe. Um, but you don't have that here. So if you try and tighten these laces, it's not really gonna do anything. 
and uh, yeah, I don't really think they look that good either. It's stitched on in a very basic, rudimentary way, and some of that stitching kind of goes over the text as well. Um, the stitching has led to some kind of one or two flaws on the upper too. The laces themselves also feel very cheap, just not particularly nice. Uh, looking at the midsole as well, at first glance you've kind of, oh, you've got these little cutouts, these 3D sections here. Although again, taking a look at these up close, that design is incredibly basic. The difference between a midsole like this and something like the Nasu 2 that we looked at recently, which has a similar sort of 3D cutout type design at points, um, the difference between those two is night and day. Now, I don't really think the Crazy One sock is a particularly good looking shoe. It's definitely a product of its time back in 2018. I don't think a shoe like that would come out now in 2021. But what it did have going for it was that ultra minimalist look, kind of futuristic, the very sock shoe kind of aesthetic that was popular then. And these, well, have kind of lost all of those things and not really gained anything positive with these kind of nasty, very rudimentary looking features that they kind of stuck on the top. I also think it's strange that this design is now associated with tech wear when, to my knowledge, the original was never really worn in that context, very much more a streetwear fan shoe. But let's look a little bit closer. I've already alluded to the quality of this shoe not being particularly good and there are plenty of examples of that throughout the shoe. There aren't so much glue marks as a consistent line of glue going Going all along the midsole here, um, which does look quite bad. And yes, I have criticized other brands like Nike for having glue marks on their soles and stuff, but this really does take things to the next level. Definitely a tier worse than what we would see from them. Let's take a look at the back though, because this is where there's something really special. Instead of on the original version of these, you would have some Adidas brand with a three stripes type text on the back. We instead have written here, MLO Smilb, non-cooperation public use Sanokans. The fabric that the expense, and then it just ends. It kind of reads like the writer was shot mid sentence or something, so uh, hopefully that didn't happen, but truly the greatest techwear mystery of our generation. In terms of the feel of this thing, it's kind of designed to look like suede. It feels more like neoprene though, and as you might expect, this provides absolutely no structure whatsoever to the heel of the shoe. The material of the upper is very stretchy and sock like for sure. Um, it's a little bit saggy around the cuff, but honestly, not too bad. Um, the ribbing detailing though is kind of more aesthetic than structural. It does doesn't really seem to do too much. So they kind of feel more like a pair of slippers or something than an outdoor pair of shoes when you've got these on. Um, but overall, I suppose the general feel of the upper is the least disappointing part of this shoe. Once I got them on though, my disappointment with these was renewed because these are way too small. I bought them in an EU46, same as pretty much all of my other shoes back there. And yeah, they're not just a little bit snug, but my toes are straight up squashed against the top of the shoe. They would not be very comfortable to wear for any extended period of time. I had to check to make sure they'd sent the right size and they had but I just would have needed an EU 47 if I wanted to keep these but it raises another problem with drop shippers buying anything from this kind of retailer is that returning these would be prohibitively expensive they have a US returns address and um, returns are not included obviously so it would probably cost me like $50 to return these and when the shoe cost 57 it just kind of means that it's not worth it and unlike buying a pair of Nike or Adidas or whatever brand sneakers I also don't have the option of sort of selling these on or anything because well their resale value is exactly zero so if you buy something like this from a dropshipper you really are just kind of rolling the dice on whether you're going to waste your money or not um, you just kind of have to resolve yourself to taking the L. At least it's better than Nev Studio that we looked at before who will actually charge you a fee for returning items. Getting away from sizing, the sole underfoot is not immediately uncomfortable. There is some kind of rudimentary foam in here to provide a little bit of cushioning. What these lack, however, is any kind of support for your foot whatsoever. And to me, this is the number one reason why you should not be buying footwear from random dodgy retailers. The sole is pretty squashy throughout, which means that it doesn't really have any structure. I mean, you can see how easy easier it is for me to just kind of like fold these up. That means it's going to deform a lot as you walk and combined with the sock-like construction, there's a very good chance when you're walking around a corner or on any kind of uneven ground, you're just going to roll your ankle or worse. This can be an issue in sock shoes generally, although brands will try and mitigate this with more rigid structured midsoles and outsoles, um, rigid sections at the heel to provide protection and support there, 
uh, cage systems that will attach the upper to the midsole, even extended toe caps to help prevent your toes from any damage. All of these things are missing from best techwear shoes, so I actually think these shoes are a little bit dangerous. You're certainly more likely to cause yourself some kind of damage or injury wearing these compared to, well, certainly anything else that I own. Even disregarding all the aesthetic stuff, I would still urge you not to buy a shoe like this. I mean, you can just tell how easy it is to crush up the sole of these versus another sock-like shoe like the Vape Max, for example. If you're wondering though, well, I really want some cool techwear shoes, but things like Acronym Prestos or BBS Bambas are always really expensive and I don't really want to pay that high price. Well, don't forget, I think there's a huge range of footwear which can fit nicely into this kind of style. As soon as you start looking outside of those hyped models, um, sneakers from all kinds of brands will not only be available at lower prices, but far more likely to go on sale as well. I mentioned this in last week's video, but it's really an area where you can pick something that appeals to you and use it as an opportunity to put a bit of a stamp or put your own twist or your own style on this kind of look. You absolutely don't need to wear hyped techwear shoes. I think even classic styles like Van slip-ons are old schools, Nike kill shots and blazers. Things like that are available far cheaper and they still look good and they still work. Reebok too have a consistent range of classic looking things and vaguely futuristic stuff as well. And all of those brands and options are gonna give you so much more stuff from like quality, construction, material perspective. You're gonna get a box. You're probably gonna get a better returns policy. You're gonna get better resale value or you're gonna be able to donate them more easily when they reach the end of their life. And you can get all of those things at a similar price to going through a drop shipper to buy best techwear shoes. Even if you have to pay a little bit more for something that you really want, I definitely think it's worth it because you're gonna end up with something that's far better quality and you're gonna be able to use it in more scenarios. As an example, I bought a pair of Salomon Speedcross off end last year for I think around $100 and I use those both for day-to-day -day walking around, I use them for walking, trail running, things like that. That one pair of shoes gives me a massive amount of versatility and utility because they're good enough to use in those contexts. Whereas something like this, um, yeah, I dread to think what would happen if you try and go trail running in these. You wouldn't last very long, that's for sure. Shoes are your direct connection to the ground at all times, so it's definitely worth getting something that not only looks good, but is gonna be comfortable and nice and supportive and usable in different scenarios as well. That's about all I can say about these. I'm not sure if I can give them the title of best techwear shoe. I think they just about make the title of shoe and they will be added to my cursed box of drop shipped and low quality techwear in the same kind of way that you might encase nuclear waste in concrete for the protection of other people. Anyway, hopefully you don't have any experience buying these, but if you've got yourself some nice sneaker steals recently or some kind of underappreciated or underrated shoe that you think uh, people should know about, then definitely add those to the comments because that's gonna be super helpful for anyone that sees this video and then checks down there for some alternative recommendations to something like this. Thank you so much for watching and as always we will catch you next week with another video. Shout out to Arctic Turtle wondering about washing techwear. Often any decent product is going to come with care labels inside there. Some things are hand wash only but stuff like Gore-Tex jackets for example if you're using the right product um, you can put those in the washing machine and they come out fine. Same with dry skin as well. Um, Stots generally people will hand wash those but you can do them in the machine if you're very gentle with them. In general though you shouldn't be afraid to wash this kind of clothing you just got to make sure to use the right kind of settings and the right kind of products and then you'll be fine. A couple of you guys mentioning some DIY tech Techwear projects that you've done as well, which was super cool to see. So maybe I'll have to give something like that a go as well. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then definitely consider doing so because we've got more fun stuff coming up. If you want to see some more uh, cursed techwear, then uh, definitely let me know. Maybe we'll go straight to Taobao and AliExpress next time. So at least we can save ourselves some money getting some of this garbage and uh, keep looking at some of the bargain basement bottom tier of techwear clothing for everyone's entertainment. Anyway, that's everything from me. So catch you next time.